Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be finding derivatives of the six inverse trig functions. Okay, those derivatives involve us just memorizing a bunch of formulas and knowing when to use them. If we're dealing with an inverse trig function and we want to differentiate, find the derivative so we can maybe perhaps find the slope of the, of the inverse trig graph, um, then we're going to be using a formula. I'm going to go ahead and give you those formulas right now and then we'll, uh, we'll see where they came from. But just so you guys know, um, your responsibility as an AP student is just to memorize um, these inverse trig uh, function uh, formulas for derivatives. Okay, we're going to start with the arc sine graph. Um, uh, just as a side note too, you might want to locate that worksheet that worksheet that I had given you uh, that has the 12 graphs on them. It has the six regular trig graphs and the six inverse trig graphs on it because I'm going to be referencing um, the inverse graphs from that worksheet. So have that handy too. So this might be a good time to kind of stop and locate that and, and put it right beside you. All right, let's go ahead and start with the uh, arc sine. Uh, let's just say that we're uh, considering that we have an arc sine function. And uh, I'm going to use arc sine here. You could use the negative one symbol, uh, but I'm going to use arc sine. Uh, let's just say that we're trying to find the derivative. So I'm going to bring in the derivative operator d over dx. So d over dx there. Okay. The formula that we have to memorize for the arc sine of u, and notice this is a composite arc sine function where u represents maybe something more than x. Okay, so we're going to have to use the chain rule, so to speak. Uh, but the formula that we're uh, expected to memorize looks something like this. The derivative of this composite arc sine function is equal to a fraction. It's equal to 1 over square root of 1 minus u squared, uh, where u is our inside function. Well, we have to still, with the chain rule, multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So we say this is multiplied by u prime, the derivative of u with respect to x. That's a multiplication. So times du over dx. And sometimes you'll see in print form that they've stacked this fraction and they've put u prime on top, because you can certainly do that. Okay. All right, let's look at the derivative of arc tangent. So I'm going to come over here, consider an inverse tangent or an arc tangent composite function that you want to differentiate. So the derivative of that composite arc tan function okay, is again another fraction and the formula we're expected to memorize okay, for this is the fraction 1 over no square root but 1 plus u squared. And of course, because it's a composite function, we have to multiply by u prime. So times du over dx. And again, in print form, you may see this whole expression du over dx on top of the derivative of u on top of the fraction here. Okay. All right, now let's take a look at um, the derivative of arc secant. Or again, you might see it as secant to the negative 1 here. Okay, but consider this composite arc secant function that we want to differentiate, find the derivative, because perhaps we're interested in the slope, which means we, we need the derivative. Okay. The derivative of this composite function is yet again another formula that includes a fraction, okay, where you have 1 over the absolute value of the inside function u, that's absolute value, times the square root of u squared minus 1. And again, it's a composite function, so we're going to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, du dx. And of course, again, you may see in print this as um, uh, stacked as a fraction with u prime on top. Okay. At this point, we're looking at these three inverse trig functions, and there are three more inverse trig functions as you guys may well know. Okay? But what's interesting is that there's a relationship that exists between these three and the other three derivatives. Uh, and it's quite easy. It's quite easy to memorize. Okay? So let me go ahead and give you those formulas. Okay? Let's say we want to find the derivative of 
arc cosine. And it's composite, so we're using u to represent that inside function. Okay, well thank goodness that we don't have to memorize three additional different, so different formulas. Okay, there's a relationship between arc cosine and arc sine. As a matter of fact, arc cosine's derivative is just the opposite of what we have here. So all I'm going to do is write the opposite fraction bar. I'm going to go ahead and stack it here, du over dx, okay, over the square root of 1 minus u squared. Okay. And I want to stop and think about this for just a second. I want to think about the relationship between arc sine and arc cosine. Okay. So somewhere over here I'm going to kind of draw in a relationship that exists. Okay. You can just look at your worksheet. Okay. Okay. If you were to take a moment and look at the arc sine graph, okay, you would see something, oh, maybe not like this, but close, okay, where the arc sine starts down here concave up, or pardon me, concave down, it's increasing, and then it's concave up, and the graph stops here. Okay, that's the arc sine graph. If you think about that for just a minute, this arc sine graph is increasing on its domain. If this graph is increasing, the rate of change is always positive. The slope of this graph, the slope of any tangent line to this graph, is always going to be a positive number. All right, we'll compare that now to, over here, the arc cosine graph. And if you look at that on the worksheet that you have, the arc cosine graph begins up here, okay, is somewhat concave up, and then becomes concave down and stops right here. Well, let's think about the comparison between arc sine and arc cosine. Arc cosine is decreasing on its domain. So no matter what point you choose along this curve, the slope of the curve is negative. The slope of every tangent line here is going to be negative. Hence, we have this formula for arc sine but yet for arc cosine, we have the opposite of the arc sine formula. All right, so now let's look at the derivative of the arc cotangent graph. All right, well, if you were to look at those two graphs on the worksheet that's been provided, you'll see that the arc tangent graph is always increasing. So look at it on your worksheet and you guys can see, locate arc tan, okay? The derivative of arc tan is going to be positive. The rate of change is positive. Okay, well look at arc cotan. That graph resembles arc tan, but it's decreasing. So that rate of change is going to be negative. So for arc cotangent, we just have to memorize the arc tan uh, formula uh, and, and negate it, if you will. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stack du dx on top. And for arc cotangent, 1 plus u squared. Okay, so it's not really that we are going to have to memorize six formulas. It's really that we can reduce it down to three. Okay, and for the final derivative, arc cosecant. So the derivative of the composite arc cosecant. Again, okay, look at your graph. Locate arc secant. And you can see that that graph is increasing on its domain, on both pieces, as you look at it. So the rate of change will be positive. But look at the arc cosecant. If you follow that graph along, at least the two pieces, you guys are going to see that that graph is decreasing everywhere on its domain. So the rate of change is going to be negative. And as a matter of fact, arc cosecant's formula is just going to be the opposite of arc secant's formula. So it's going to be the opposite of this formula up here. Oh, that should be a u. Pardon me. So that's going to be u squared minus 1. Okay. So what seemed at first to be kind of difficult here in memorizing six additional formulas, really we can collapse that down to three. If we know three, these first three, then we do know the other three as well. And just real quickly, something to point out as well is that I find it unusual. It's kind of interesting, I guess. You could say that the derivatives of the regular trig functions all have in their answers a trig function. Yet when you find the derivatives of any of the inverse trig functions, okay, there are no trig functions, if you will, in the formulas. So that's kind of an interesting thing to note and maybe to help you memorize these. Okay. All 
here in a few minutes, we're going to actually use those formulas in the way that they're meant to be used. And, that, and, and what I mean by that is that we're going to actually be given some um, inverse trig functions and we're going to have to utilize those formulas and just plug and chug numbers. Okay? But I think it's good at this point to, to uh, kind of go through where did those formulas come from, at least the first three we mentioned. Okay? Where did they come from? That is, if you guys happen to forget uh, what the formulas are, because that would be easy to do, it would be easy to forget those formulas. Um, how could you derive them? So let's take a moment and look at the arc sine u's derivative. And where did that come from? How could we come up with that formula on our own if we needed to? Okay. If you can memorize them, you won't need to do this. But if you forget what the formula is, perhaps you can um, go through this process and uh, create the formula, uh, find the formula, and then use it um, to find a derivative. So let's first start by deriving the arc sine formula. And notice that I'm going to actually just derive the parent function, arc sine of x, not a composite function. And we'll make adjustments in a minute. Okay, so where did that formula come from? All right, well, first of all, let's start with, if you're, if you're, if you're trying to find the derivative of um, an inverse trig uh, function, let's go ahead and start with uh, taking y equals sine of x and actually switching the x and y because that's what an inverse means. Okay, so notice what I have here and what I've started with could have been sine of x equals y or y equals sine of x, but I've switched the x and y. Okay, now the purpose is to find the derivative of this equation. So we're going to bring in the derivative operator on both sides of the equation. We're going to differentiate. Okay, over here on this side, notice that we're going to have to use implicit differentiation. We're going to have to implicitly differentiate because x and y don't match up. So the derivative of sine, the outside function is cosine. Let's leave y alone. But then we're going to go back and multiply by the derivative of y with respect to x. So we're going to get times dy over dx. Moving to the right side of the equation, the derivative of x with respect to x is 1. Our purpose is to solve for dy dx, or y prime. So we're going to divide both sides of this equation by cosine y. So dividing both sides, I'm going to get 1 over cosine of y. Okay. Well, that doesn't even look like the formula we had, and that's because we don't want a derivative in terms of y. We want to get rid of this y. Okay. We want something with x in it in our answer. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do a little pre-cal work. Okay. And to help us, we're going to have to go back and remember that sine squared y plus cosine squared y, that Pythagorean property, equals 1. So I'm looking at this connection over here to what I have. Let me solve this Pythagorean property for cosine y. So let's isolate cosine squared y by subtracting sine squared y. Let's extract the roots. So I'm going to bring in the square root. And I'm going to get that cosine y is equal to positive negative square root of 1 minus sine squared y. Okay, so now over here, which one of the two roots, positive or negative, am I going to replace in for cosine y? Well, remember the arc sine graph is always increasing, so we're going to choose the positive root. Okay, so if you went back and looked at that graph, you would see that it's always going up. So that tells us which root to choose. So let's come over here. dy dx equals 1 over, okay, we're going to put in the positive root, 1 minus sine squared y. And you might be thinking, well, oh my goodness, that, you know, that's even more complicated than what we had up here. <clears throat> but we're going to make one more substitution, and we'll have the formula that we need. So we're going to put 1 over square root of 1 minus, and if you think back to the original thing that I started with, sine of y was equal to x. 
So right here, if I replace sine squared y, okay, using this equation, I'm going to get x squared. Now we're getting somewhere, and this looks more closely like the formula that we had. Okay. All right. This is the derivative formula for the parent function, okay, for just x, if you will. Well, what if we didn't have just the parent function and we had a composite function? For example, if this was u. Okay, so if this is a composite function with u here instead of x, okay, then I could replace this x with u, okay, but then the chain rule says I still have to multiply by the derivative of u, which would be du over dx, and hence I would get exactly what I had given you guys uh, back up here. Okay, so right here, just remember that okay, we can say that dy dx okay, is equal to us finding the derivative of arc sine of x, and that's equal to this equation right here. Okay, now to adjust in case we have a composite function, um, I'm going to come, well, I guess I'll come down a little bit here. Okay, let's say that we don't want to just find the derivative of the parent function. We want to find the derivative of a composite function. So adjusting derivative with respect to x of arc sine of u is equal to 1 over square root of 1 minus x is replaced with u, u squared, but because it's composite, we have to multiply by the derivative of u. So this is just a way for us to find that formula in case we forget. So looking back at what we did, okay, we knew we needed to start with an inverse equation, which that's what this is. We brought in the derivative operator. We got cosine y. We wanted to get rid of y because we want something in terms of x. We used precal, a Pythagorean property to help us. Made a couple of substitutions here. Went back and connected. Put in x for sine y. Okay. And then we decided that, you know what, we're probably going to be finding the derivatives of composite arc functions. So we replaced our x's with u and performed the necessary chain rule. So I wanted to kind of go through this one example with you to show you that there is a way for us to recreate um, this formula, to derive it in case we had forgotten it. All right, in the next video, we're going to derive the um, arc tangent and the arc secant formulas as well. Um, just to uh, give us a way, a means to uh, find the formulas in case we do forget them. So in that next video, we'll do those two derivations, and then we'll also look at three examples of using these formulas to actually find derivatives given some uh, inverse trig functions.